And welcome to another exciting episode of Triple Tap. This is episode number 39. Can you believe that? And guys, apologies for the delay tonight, but I can guarantee you this episode tonight will be worth the wait. So thank you for being patient with us. I'd like to welcome Kent and Lance to the call. Gentlemen, how are you? And let's, I know we're going to start pretty, uh, pretty much straight away, but just have you got one little piece of gold nugget that you can give our audience tonight before we get going and read the bio of our speaker tonight? Oh, excited. This is going to be a great interview. Um, little little bit of news, if you've been following. The uh, Chief of Police for Yudinji was arrested in public um, yesterday uh, for impersonating a public official. He's since been released. You know you're over the mark when you start to draw this sort of attention. We're starting to get massive profile. So, um Kent and I have been discussing this. We've got an action plan and uh, it's getting exciting, guys. It's really exciting. Excellent. Gold nugget from you to leave for our listeners, Kent, before we get started. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, okay, just check you can hear me. That's fantastic. I can see I've lit up the screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was talking with a gentleman today by the name of John Sultan. Coming up, very exciting. We're trying to partner with some pretty large um, companies uh, to back a coast-to-coast -coast run with um, John Sultan. He's an extreme long-distance runner. The plan is he's going to run from the furthest western part of Australia to the farthest eastern part of Australia. Uh, he's going to do that, we hope, in 63 days. Uh, that's how long it'll take him to cross the country on foot. And at the same time, uh, we intend to be doing video recordings and interviews with our um uh, Australian Aboriginal sovereigns who are on that, who are in line with that trek. So th that should be a super exciting thing coming up later in the year. A huge project. But um, tonight, um, I'm really excited. We're going to be talking with James. Excellent. And I'm going to introduce uh, James in just a moment. Um, uh, I'm very, very uh, keen and interested about tonight's um, speaker because my partner and I have been very, very interested in water and, um, you know, what's in the water for quite some time. Decided to wear my water shirt tonight. It's like splash, splash water, like I've just jumped in a bucket of water. So uh, I'm super keen um, and, you know, not all water is the same and not all bottled, bottled water is the same. Done a lot of testing on that sort of stuff. And even your coconut water that you think is good for you is quite acidic and the best coconut water is obviously from a fresh coconut so i'm going to go ahead and read james's very very interesting bio a little bit long but you know i think it is worth reading and then we'll bring james on and we'll um share with him he can share his story with us and we have got some slides to show you tonight about some results that james has had and his story is going to be quite interesting guys so hold on to your seats and get ready to ask any questions and i'm going to go ahead and introduce james Lowe. he lived in tasmania most of his life He's travelled a bit around our country and he's worked in other areas as well. And he loves our country and he respects the Indigenous traditional owners of Terra Australis. He's an arborist and a horticulturalist. He now resides in Queensland, living in the Yuga era, y Yugira era, sorry if I didn't pronounce that wrong, Queenslanders. Um, and of course, he still has some land in Tasmania, which he named Ben Bullen in respect to around about 150 to 200 original Indigenous people who lived in this area. And Ben Bullen means um, quite high place in Aboriginal. I'm not even going to pronounce this other word, but I think it's Tona, Tona Winna Lameni. I'm sure James will correct me uh, when he comes onto the call. He used to be he used to be a proud Australian till he woke up to the corruption. And even though we have a beautiful country to live in, he cannot stand back uh, stand back to see it becoming owned by corporate politicians and their partners from other countries. We need to live freely and live by the law. L O R E. Do no injury, harm, or loss to our fellow man. Since living in Queensland for almost two and a half years, James was diagnosed with a severe liver disease in May of 2022. And he thought to himself, well, how did that happen? He made inquiries about the water of all things and was informed by the water authorities some shocking evidence, which you're going to hear tonight. James spent $3,500 to get his home safeguarded by the 
uh, by the chemicals and the metals that were in the water. Within the last two weeks, he's had blood tests and ultrasound of his liver again. And the results came back last week and the exact doctor's words were, it's a miracle. James's liver had completely healed. And in his notes, he wrote the words, a remarkable recovery. Even noting James's liver had reduced back to normal size, a reduction of 23 millimetres. James has researched the chemicals and the metals in the water. And guess what? Some of them have an effect on our livers. James strongly believes the water is making people sick. And if only after a few short months of drinking water, showering, washing, using filtered water, James has been healed. Water is living. And until man adds too many chemicals and metals to it, making it dead water, James is living proof. There are many scriptures about living water, and James believes that the water authorities should be making people more aware of the dangers and the advice on getting it filtered and even offering people subsidies to help with this cost. James now knows enough about the law to also know that we should not be paying land tax to local government and has been placed so far um, to on two house communication bans by the Ipswich City Council by simply showing them the laws of this country. He's also showed them they are overcharged him for a quarter, even before becoming the registered owner. And he said he would personally rather pay the traditional owners some form of payment rather than the local government, whom are so corrupt and are always making headlines for the wrong spending of the public purse. But nothing is normally ever done to fi fix the corruption. James's main goal at the moment is to address the water. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's um, give a big round of applause in the chat with some claps to uh, James Lowe. So James, if you're there, turn on your camera and uh, welcome you to the call. We finally got here, James. How are you? Yeah, good day, guys. Thanks for that. I got a bit emotional when you're reading that. <laughs> yeah. What a journey you've been on. Yeah, just the uh, the information about the medical stuff in regards to my liver. I mean, in May, yeah, May, May last year, diagnosed with severe liver disease, moved into my new house, which I've had built in. It's Ripley, called Ripley. <laughs> um, got uh, the uh, water filtration system um, installed on the 11th of October last year. And after just that small amount of period, uh, using filtered water, like you said, went back to get more blood tests and um, ultrasound done and you have the results in front of you. That's that's amazing. And like like you said, the doctor's exact words were, it's a miracle. He's never seen nothing like it. Let's have a look at those um, before we get the guys asking questions. Let's just have a look at that. I've just put this little slide for you from based on the, um, the reports that you gave us. So... Um, James has kindly shared some of his medical um, information with us. We have attempted to um, block out James's personal details for security reasons, but you can see here, James, this was a report on the 19th of May, and we can note here that the doctor's written moderate to severe liver disease. Um, can you just share what was going on for you a little bit? Well, that, what happened? Yeah, that's just, that's just the first results from bloods and uh, of the ultrasound. And when I first had this test done, he, he did inform me that, you know, he said, do you drink or smoke? And I said, well, I, I don't smoke. Drinking is at a bare minimal. Um, he said, pretty good thing that you don't because you'd be in a, in a lot more trouble. So, um, yeah, basically that was, I'm not a doctor, I'm an arborist. <laughs> so all that sort of there, he's just highlighted that section there that shows the moderate to severe liver disease in that category where he's put brackets there. Yeah. And what what made you um, even think that it had anything to do with water or to get the water tested? Well, I just, thought, I just thought, well, I've only lived in Queensland a short amount of time, you know, 18 months to two years at the time of being diagnosed with this and did a little bit of, knew a little bit about water, do you know what I mean? And I thought, well, that's, that's, that's the first, that was going to be my first step to look into this information. And upon uh, contacting Urban Utilities, they did not want to send me the chemical list. And it took three, it took three emails to Urban Utilities for them to give me the list of chemicals in the water here and metals. Wow. 
Wow. Um, Lance, just so you're yeah, muted. Um, so this is another report. So let's just go back. So that was the 19th. And then what is it? Two weeks later, you went back and you had more more tests done? No, the, the, the recent tests were only in the last couple of weeks. You'll see the dates there. Yep. This so one the, this one on the screen is from the 31st of May. I, I put yep. it in order for you. So this one, you had an ultrasound and, and stuff done, more tests there. And then yep. fast forward to February 23. Yep. Um, you can see he's gone all normal. What did you do between March? Can you show, can you show this? Um, basically, initially, you know, I took it very seriously. I changed my diet and um, there's a section there, the same section as on the other page, everything's back to normal. Um, so initially I did take it very seriously and I, and I changed my diet for about six to seven weeks. I lost around about 10 to 15 kilos in that time. So. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, I, I got my diet right. I um, did a little bit of exercise for a little while, but not too long. Um, but basically, after using the filtered water for, let's say, within a month, um, I used to even have lumps in my chest. I used to have lumps, and you know, I could feel them, hard lumps. And after about a, a one month of using filtered water, I started to feel better inside. I could feel these lumps have gone. I, I, I felt no pain in my liver. I used to have pain in my liver. Um, so I probably relaxed after about two months of using the filtered water. Um, going back, we all love food. I try and eat fairly healthily, but I do like food like the rest of us. So I really went back to my old diet. I'm not a big one for exercise. I play a little bit of golf every now and then. But I'm not really big into exercise either because I'm obviously I'm 56 now. So yeah, I sort of um, <clears throat> I didn't really change a lot except for the water. And that you've got the you got the medical results. Mm. You've got a doctor sitting in his, in his surgery looking at his computer screen, saying it's a miracle. He has not seen results like this. Coincidentally, when I first went and got these tests, he was he was looking at doctor. Uh, doc, um, doc, sorry, documentaries on water itself. And he said that one drop of water under a microscope is the most beautiful thing you'll look at. And scientifically, um, it even shows that the water is alive. When man mm. adds chemicals and metals to the water, it becomes dead. So, mm. and he's got that information to share as well at some stage. So he's he's looking into that with me now as well. I've got the doctor, me and the doctor. I've got the doctor pretty well on side. To he's looking at these results and he's saying, "You've got the evidence there." And he's also re wrote in these notes a remarkable uh, what he said there a remarkable difference or something. So the evidence is there. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a remarkable change. Uh, de decreased liver size by 25 millimeter, 25 millimeters. And he, he said to me, he has not seen results like this unless somebody has gone on a strict diet regime for at least over 12 months and a very strict physical program for over 12 months as well. Mm. I haven't changed anything except for the water. And we noticed the time frame is only about seven months between May and February. Yep, October. Yes, correct. October. I had October. I had the eleventh of October. I got the uh, the uh, water watering. It's uh, Gillia Water, and they're the people that installed my full water um, filtration system in. It did cost three and a half thousand dollars, but I took when you're diagnosed with serious liver uh, disease, that's the system I got there. Gillia Water. Um, his name was James as well. He was fairly, fairly persuasive of getting the system done on my house because he heard about my uh, severe liver disease. And I'm glad he took over and I said yes. You know, he, he came basically the next day and installed this after I told him I had a liver disease. He said, I'm pretty sure I can help you, and I let him do it. So, so there's lots of information. Julia Water, um, I'd recommend it to everyone. And I just tell everyone now, wherever I go to get your water filtered, guys, because I do believe that um, as 
a lot more people know than I do, the water is full of these chemicals and metals that are going to have an effect on our health. Did you take them somewhere to get tested? The water? Yeah. Not as yet, no. But we're in that process at the moment. So, yeah, we're going to get some unfiltered uh, water tested and we're also going to get my water tested now as well. So, so James, I'd like to... All right, go, Kent. No, no, you go for it, mate. No. Okay. Well, let's let's throw a few um, questions there and drill down and see if we can um, bring a, a bit more of this to life. James, I um I spoke with you. I I, I met you. I heard your story, um, and I said, hey, let's um let's get you on Triple Tap. Um, mate, you live in Ripley. Ripley, yeah. Um, you live in Ripley now. Lance and I grew up and spent um a fair bit of our childhood and teenage years in Ipswich, which is uh, Ripley's a part of, mm -hmm. and just. Mate, I just want to let you know, Ripley's a place where I wagged school a few times because when I was a kid wagging school, it was nothing but uh, trees and kangaroos and uh, the odd <laughs> koala and things like that, and few, few echidnas getting around the place. So obviously times are changing because of the the council is developing things out there. Now, yeah. at the intro, um, when we were talking about your bio, you mentioned the corruption of council. That's not much of a stretch to suggest that. In fact, it's not a stretch because almost consecutive councils have been dragged through the courts and there are people serving. Is, is it correct that some of them are sh serving jail sentences from the council? Yeah, I believe the uh, ex-mayor is in jail still, Paul Pas yeah. I can't even, I don't know his name, Paul Pasali. Paul Pasali. Pasali, yep. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Pasali. Um, and, and, so and yep. that, that's, that's not a stretch. That's not an exaggeration. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's a that's a court fact to everyone who's listening. Okay, that that's yeah, absolutely all, a court fact. Yeah, and Mate, also, if I can, yeah, it's also in the mainstream media a lot. I mean, yeah, of course, it's in the newspapers. It's in the mainstream media. They're reporting on this um, council as being corrupt. Now, now I want to point out that it is not the council who is supplying the water. It's a company called Urban Utilities. Urban Utilities is a corporation which is supposed to be overseen by uh, Anastasia Palaget's beautiful government. Um, they do such a good job and um, they're not corrupt at all. I'd just like to go on the record of saying that they're not, 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 not corrupt at all. So in any case, um, mate, Urban Utilities. Now, um, Ainsley asked if you had the water tested, but in fact, it took you a few times uh, and you, because of your persistence, you almost forced urban utilities to supply you with what was in the water, correct? They're the ones who analysed the water and told you what was in it. Correct. And you know what? Yeah. They told me in writing not to drink the water. Yes. And now you've shown that to me, but we are going to post that with your permission mm -hmm. on, on the main channel so people can see it on the main tap channel. They told you... Do not, you are not to drink the water. Get your water filtered. Use bottled water until you get your water filtered. Do not drink the water. Yep. That's all, that's 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 massive. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. That here in Australia, many of us think we're in a first world country. And the fact is, the infrastructure that we're existing on. And the chem hey, did they mention that if they were the ones pumping the chemicals into the water, or did they say where these chemicals were coming from? Well, I was in touch with uh, one of the uh, head people at Urban Utilities. He basically did the handball to uh, uh, SEQ water. So when I told him uh, my situation, and I'm saying who puts the chemicals in the water, uh, we take instructions from SEQ. Uh, so. Obviously, but I think it just reverts back to the council. The council advise them what chemicals to put in. Um, I've also been led to believe that 95% of councils still put a lot of these chemicals, including fluoride, in the water, compared to the rest of the world, which is only 5%. So Australia, we're a dumping ground for fluoride. Um, I've heard that uh, on the weekend that uh, Australia uses... 300 tonnes of fluoride in the water here in this country. 300 tonnes. 
a fur item. T- yeah, per what, mate? Per week, per annum, per whatever? I think it would be per year. I think it's per year. Wow. There was a, gen- there was a gentleman that spoke at um, one of the Freedom Rallies in Brisbane at the weekend. I'm only talking about my experience. Um, I'm an arborist. I'm a horticulturalist. This is a whole new field for me. But all I can tell you guys is my whole body feels different. Um, how can you go from severe liver disease to all back to normal from the 11th of October until about two weeks ago? Yeah, but let's let's drill down into this a bit more, mate. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and let's make some some clarifying statements here you pay for your water you pay urban utilities just like everyone in queensland we have to pay urban utilities for our water so regardless of who's putting the chemicals in the water we are paying urban utilities and that's a company that's supposed to be controlled by the queensland state government the non-corrupt queensland state government right so there's that fact now you you say you're only an arborist or anything like that but you're the one who who actually drilled into this and got them to tell you what those chemicals were. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming you took those to your doctor. I did take them to my doctor, and my doctor did write a report for Urban Utilities suggesting that, um, yes, I do need my water filtered. He looked at the chemical list. He told me and advised um, me to get my water filtered, and I sent that letter with my medical condition to um urban utilities and that's when they came back with yeah don't drink the water are you comfortable telling us what your doctor said to you in relation to the chemicals that urban utilities admitted that they he was very surprised um, um yeah so and did he, he mentioned like that it. was did he mention if those chemicals were anything to do with possible liver disease or anything like that um, I looked into that myself. I don't think my doctor did. Um, I'm just trying to That's see if I can get the doctor's letter here um, that he wrote for me. So in regards to this, I've kept all the emails. Um, so yeah, we're going to post those on our channel, mate. We'll post it yeah. with, with your permission, yeah. of course. Yeah, definitely. I've got the whole list here of the emails backwards and forwards. I'm just trying to find the doctor's letter, but I don't think it's in this folder at the moment. Um, I find living in Queensland a very, very big challenge. Um, I've said to some good friends, living in this state is like you are consistently keeping the wolves away from your door. My desk here, my computer desk, is full of paperwork. Um, I just can't believe how much you've, you've got to do in this state to just, just to, to want to live freely. Um, the stuff that I've got to go through um, is quite incredible. So I also just want to tell you guys, I do suffer from PTSD um, through uh, something that I've been through as well. So excuse, if you could excuse me at times, I've been through, as we all have done in life, we've all been through challenges, um, but I have been diagnosed with PTSD. Um, yeah, so been through quite a lot in life. Um, so... Well, we've had discussion. Yeah. We've yeah. had discussions about that, James, and um, I, yeah. I've told you that um, you know uh, I I consider PTSD to mean that you're experienced, and I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying um, a lot. It is it is very common for men and women who have been through um, very tough careers uh, yeah. to have to experience PTSD on a daily basis. And um, not only in, that, Kent. Also, sorry to butt in, uh, but also dealing with certain situation from government departments and put pressure on us as individuals and families. Well, you wouldn't be the only one who's experienced that, mate. It's a common thing and um, our heart goes out to you and we live a common existence. Yep. So you're, you're in good company, mate. And um, you know, when, when your family's involved in stuff like that, I mean, most dads and, uh, you know, we love our children. Yeah. And I have been through... <sighs> Um, quite a bit. <laughs> so if I struggle at times, I'm really sorry, but I'm just being open and honest as well. No, no, you're coming across well, mate. So get, getting back to the water, mm-hmm. um, what were some of the chemicals that were in the water, mate? Uh, well, aluminium was at the top of the list. <laughs> aluminium? Aluminium. 
Um, so I'm just, I should have had this up, Kent. I'm really sorry. I no, no, stop. It. It's, it, it's okay, mate. It's okay. Um, you, you take some time and look at that and sit and yep. pull up the list. I'm pretty confident um, if I look into it, I'm going to find that aluminium has very strong links to um, uh, Alzheimer's and um, a lot of other degenerative brain diseases yep. that pe that is on the rise. It's totally recorded as being on the rise um, uh, across Australia. And I'm just wondering, um, now you're making me wonder, you know, if aluminium is the top of the list, alum dissolved aluminium in water, if you drink that, that's a heavy metal that's going to go straight into your system, surely. Yep. And there was a heap of bromos. There's, there, was, there, there was about half a dozen bromos, different types of – I'm sorry, I don't know. I haven't got them in front of me just yet. Um, chlorine. Uh, the, the only test the gentleman did on the uh, filtration system when he came to my home – was chlorine, yeah. and he said uh, he went to the kitchen sink. He poured some water into a cup. He put a little um, tablet in and stirred it. And as we've seen, all the the post, you know, people, there was a high amount of chlorine in the water as well. Um, so that's a bit of a concern. Um, that's the only test he did. Um, but I think James really pushed it for me once he heard I have a liver condition, and he really wanted to help. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but he also made another sale, but. Listen, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't care about the cost in the end. I thought I've been I've been diagnosed with a severe liver disease. I want to get it right, and I thought, well, let's give the water a go, and look what's happened. <laughs> and let's be clear, lawfully, we're not making any accusations against anyone here. We are just discussing the facts, and yep. these are the facts that have been reported to us by. Um, a doctor, a medical doctor by Urban Utilities, which is a company that's governed by the Queensland, supposed Queensland government. Uh, and you've had some dealings with the council. So all we're doing is discussing facts. Um, yeah, I've also, to, I've also, yeah, like I said in my bio, I've been put on two communication bans by the Ipswich City Council yeah. because I've um, discussed the law with them in regards to uh, land tax. They didn't like that. Yeah, and also the fact that, um, yeah, I asked a question in regards to, I think you've overcharged me for a quarter yeah. before I came the registered owner. They put another communication ban straight on onto me for, for those two reasons. James, if the water's this bad in the area in which you live, have you had a chance to speak to your neighbours about what's in the water and whether they should be also getting their, their, their water tested or be, making sure their water's filtered? Is there any sick neighbours around you? Um, I've obviously advised them. Um, I, take, <laughs> I take bottled water to friends now at home church. I take bottled water. Um, I've advised my younger son, who's now expecting a baby in July, <laughs> I said, I will bring you your water from my home. Um, um, yeah. And, and like this filtration system does the whole house, do you know what I mean? So I, I shower in it now. I brush my teeth. The washing's done in it. Um, the dishwasher, obviously, the whole house is covered. And the amazing effect on my body alone, I had lumps in my chest. You know what I mean? I had lumps. They've all gone. You know what I mean? So mm. the water, since I, it's not a coincidence mm. that this has happened. Water, yeah. I think yeah. we were talking with uh, Ian a couple of weeks ago, and he was um, he was also talking about the power of structured water and that for our bodies. So uh, I'm not surprised that you had some good results with the water there. Not all bottled water is the same, guys. I know I was saying to the guys earlier, um, you know, we used to get different sorts of bottled water and even some of the most expensive that you think, like New Zealand water and the mountain waters and all that, Australia's purest and all that. And we used to actually tip them into little cups for at an expo and we used to test and show people how acidic the bottled waters even were. So not all bottled water is the same and it's not all the same pH as well. So um, be mindful of, of the bottled waters that you're getting, guys, and, and maybe just do a few tests yourself. We have a little machine that tests, um, I can't remember what it's called, um, in the water, but we also test it with pH drops as well. And it was really, really shocking when you see that test as to, um, you know, you think water, bottled water would be good for you or it would be really healthy, but not all bottled water is the same. So just be careful what sort of bottled waters you get, guys.
Sorry, I'm still trying to bring these this list up. I take too many photos. <laughs> so I'm really sorry, but uh Okay. Where to where to from here now, James? What's um what's life looking for you now since you've you've only just recently had this second second lot of tests. So where to now for you? Oh well, you know, I, I got very emotional the day this happened. I rang a lot of friends and family and told them, you know, about this great result. Um I, I, I think I knew when I was going to the doctor, I'm thinking this is, I'm going to be okay because I felt absolutely brilliant inside. Do you know what I mean? I'm a Christian. We've had prayer as well. And I do believe God has given me the wisdom to look at the water. Um, in There's scripture in the Bible. There's several scriptures in the Bible that talk about living water. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, yeah, I feel very blessed, that's for sure. I've definitely heard Can of... Can I ask you some questions? Go oh. for it, Lance. Sorry, no, go for it, Lance. You're muted, mate. I can't hear you. I, I think that... Yeah, okay. See, I don't know if you can hear me, mate. Um, we're certainly back in the other way, so you can ask some questions. Yeah, we can hear you, Kent. Okay, I don't know if Lance can hear us. We might be having some technical difficulties. All right, okay. Um, James, let's get back into urban utilities. Um, you sent them some letters and explained to them after that they had admitted the water was full of all these toxins, all these chemicals. Yep. Sent, sent them a letter and explaining when you felt they had some responsibility. Why don't you share that story with us? Yeah, well, basically, um, they they got back in touch with me and they, they were asking really what I wanted. Um, so I think they come up with a resolution. They took um, the water usage down to $0, but because obviously they charge for sewage um, and all that sort of stuff, um, my bill was around about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. They, 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 they took the water usage down to zero, come to around about thirty, thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars still owing. And my request to them, but they said, "What do you want?" And I said, "Well, what I would like is because I've had to pay uh, three and a half thousand dollars for this filtration system, uh, would be my request that that is credited to my account." with you people, and when that money is used up, I will pay for the water that I'm using. That was my agreement. Once that credit has been used up. So once the $3,500 in, in, in uh, their bills came through and were back to zero, I would start paying for the water. They would not agree to that. So they basically left me with a, I'm out of pocket, $3,500 and also, um, yeah, I'm still owing uh, around about, I don't know, about $1,400 still at the moment. What I'm actually doing at the moment, I'm just paying um, a uh, fortnightly fee to them uh, of around about uh, $50 a fortnight, what I can afford at the moment, $50 to $100 a fortnight. So I don't want them to obviously restrict my water. I don't believe they can do that anyway. But obviously I don't want them to come over the top of me and, I think they're going to probably leave me alone because they probably recognise me as a bit of, a bit of an exceptional case because they know the evidence that, that I do have, and it is my intention. I've also tried to ask them uh, to have a meeting with their CEO. They won't give me his contact details. Obviously, I know who the CEO is, so it will be my intention to try and have a meeting with him to try and resolve this. Um, and simply, all I'm asking is for, uh, yeah, for. I mean, they told me not to drink the water. They did tell me to put the filtration system on. So they, I'm only following their, their instructions. So they've told me to put the filtering system on and not to drink the water. Well, I did I did what they told me to do. It cost me $3,500. So I'm looking for a, a, a reimbursement. James, the, um, the, the new Chief Executive Officer of um, Ur the Urban Utilities Board, if it's the right one that I've got here, is Paul Arnold. Um, Correct. 
Is that the only water company in Queensland that provides water? Like we and WA only have the water corporation. If that is the only water corporation or the water company in Queensland, they can't actually ever cut your water off because they have a monopoly. Uh, it's not like you can go and choose another water company like you can say gas or electricity. If they are the only water provider in that state, they cannot cut your water off because water is a basic necessity of life. Yeah, basically, I, because I've only lived here two and a half years, but I do believe there are other water companies in Queensland. So urban utilities, I believe, is not just the only one. Okay. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> but I, I am led to believe there are other water companies in Queensland. Yeah. Well, it does look like I've got the right company here. So Paul Arnold is the new chief executive officer that was appointed on the 1st of September last year. So uh, there's, yep. the, there's the name of the CEO that you need to contact, Paul Arnold. Yep. Yeah, we, I, I knew that. <laughs> but thank you. But thank you anyway. Yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, no, no, I, I don't want to touch off there, James, but... Um, utility uh, water, the, the utility water, sorry, Kent, is the other, um, they're up on the Sunshine Coast, apparently, utility water. Unity water, sorry. So, they're split up over um, asset base you know, dams, pipelines, this sort of stuff. So there's a corporate structure like SEQ Water, like Sun Water, all these all these corporations. Then QUU is your intermediary between those guys and um, the councils. So see, there's a profit margin added at every piece of the process. Now, QUU are going to say they put in the chemicals that the council tells them to put in. And, and that's true to legislation because... Anna Bly passed legislation and said the councils can determine whether they choose to use these chemicals or not, right? But they have to know that some of these chemicals they're using are highly toxic. They have to know that because they have to employ scientists to deploy and specify parts per million, and they would have to look at recommended health rates, that's that comes under the safe limit so i think we are uncovering a conspiracy here and we are developing a theory that um there may be something to this so if you're a corporation and you're selling a food product you have to have a typical analysis and when you're putting chemicals into that you would have to get that approved through the tga so do you think there would be TGA approval on uh, council water? I think the councils are committing a crime straight up. Yep. That's what I believe. And I believe it's that basic and it's just that simple. No one's looked at the whole structure. Why, why Lance, do some councils get rid of fluoride and some keep it? Yeah, look, the argument's very strong that chloride's just a poison and we all know it's in there to um, dumb down the male. So uh, it reduces testosterone. Testosterone uh, reduction in males is a pandemic. It is completely out of control in the developed world. Let me ask you a question about your water filter. Is it whole of house? Yes. Right, okay. So for everyone who doesn't know, the skin is the largest organ on the body and we can absorb water and chemicals through the skin. So it's just not drinking it, guys. It's showering in it. Now, when you heat chlorine above a certain temperature, its chemical analysis changes to become extremely highly toxic. Now, can anyone think where you would come into contact with water that's been heated in a household environment? A spa? Maybe the, maybe the shower. The spa, the shower, right? And how much are you coming in contact with? 40, 60, 100 litres on your biggest organ in your body? That's how we're absorbing it, through through our mouth, through our body. So On a daily basis. On a, da on a daily basis. Mm. Cooking so, about food. Can I just mention, yeah. Lance, sorry uh, to butt in, uh, but 
the first time I cooked in filtered water that this system does to your whole home, I cooked a silver side. I have never tasted silver side. <laughs> I've gone, oh my goodness. I am tasting the best meat. <laughs> I felt like a king. I felt like a king. I was eating unchemical, un unmetalled meat, and it was just so beautiful. So yeah, even even cooking, obviously. Now, now, does the filter system remove the fluoride? Basically, what this document says, Julian Water, uh, ninety nine point nine percent of the chemicals and metals are removed through this system. It's uh, that there, that basically goes on the outside of the home. It's got a cover on it, of course, but there's three quite big filters in there. Within that price as well, of the $3,500, they change them filters for the next three years in that price as well, once every year. So um, pretty amazing. So what, I am going to get your the ongoing, next... What's your yeah. ongoing maintenance costs for those um, for the so, system? So, so they will be after three years. The first three years they're on there. They will change them for the in with which was included in that price. But um, obviously, I, I don't know the cost, what the ongoing cost is. Um, but really, when you see the results that I have, I I don't really care. <laughs> so yeah, well, I do a little bit, but I think it's unbelievable. How much does it cost to get a detailed analysis done? Did um, specifically I, I chase it. With, yeah, I got in touch with Brad Paxton. Um, do you guys know Brad? We do. Yes, I've spoken to him a few times. Um, what a great man he is. Um, he um, he's going to do the testing for us, um, and it's going to cost me around about a thousand dollars. But he'll come back with a full analysis of my water now compared to water. That is unfiltered. Yep, but I'm prepared to pay that because I would like to know the results as well. I'd also like to know the results when they take these filters out. What's going to actually show what's connected to them after twelve months? I think that'll be pretty uh, mind-boggling. What's going to come out of them filters? So I, I believe Brad uses uh, Sydney Uni for his uh, typical analysis of. Uh, of, of exactly what's in the water because some of these um, poisons are going to be because they've made it into a cocktail. So, and, you know, you're sort of starting to um, bond elements together and create new alloys out of these metals and, 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 and that sort of stuff. So it's going to be, it's going to be quite interesting guys. I think we've got something to take here to the TGA. I think we really need to uh, get that typical analysis. I think we really need to bring this to a head. Um, that's our peak body. Um, we've seen their failures. And um, it's about time we started to put these guys under more pressure. Because I, I know if you tried to put those chemicals in your drinking water into a sports drink, say I created a sports drink and we'll call it um, ninja juice. <laughs> if I went to the TGA with those chemicals in there, there is absolutely no way I could get approval for that drink. None, nil, zero, zilch. So I think this is going to be a really easy one to get on top of, a really, really easy one. Well, I've got the evidence, so I'm, I'm willing to help. I want to help my fellow man as well because there is far too much sickness in this country, people are dying of cancers all the time. You know, people are people are struggling with their mental health. Um, you know, so I, I I went back to the basics. I went to the water, and look what we've uncovered. Yeah, and yeah. If, 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 a, if a miracle can happen to me, it can happen to everyone. So, I, I truly believe what we're putting in, and our bodies are a huge percentage of water alone. You know, this is um, pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? And that's why I, I, I think that we go to the water uh, bodies and like they do with the solar on your roof, let's let's you know look at really getting some people some subsidy for why should I, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big lot of money, three and a half, a lot of people can't afford three and a half thousand dollars. But if those mm. costs come down, you know, they're, they're bringing this stuff into our homes. 
one of the emails, sorry, I got back from Urban Utilities, in the end, they said uh, they only deliver the, 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 the water with the chemicals and metals in it to the stop tap. So basically they're saying from the stop tap out on the street, um, from there to my home is my responsibility. So they were trying to make out all the all the nasty stuff finishes at the at the stop tap out on the street, and from that so, point onwards, it becomes my responsibility. Can you believe they so, said that? Yeah. So where do you get aluminium in the drinking water process? I wonder if it's all the chemtrails they're spraying in the sky, which is running into the water reservoirs, which is finding its way into the drinking water process. I wonder if that could be it. Look, I cannot believe that our sacred government would use a chemical weapon on its own citizens. So I'm going to say this must be just pure incompetence. So I think this is going to be really easy for that fat slag, um, Anastasia Palaszczuk, to resolve these problems with the um, awesome corporations that she's put in place. So I think we've got to come up with a plan to address this issue. Yeah. Avon says, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be easier to just stop putting the poisons in the water? Well, yeah. 100%. It would be easier to do that. Right? And you would think that a, an elected political leader, beloved of her people, would care so much about her people and so much, much about their health because the government wants to do the best for the people that... She wouldn't stand for it that there'd be toxins and poisons in the water. She would get on top of this, I'm sure. You know, I'm, I'm wondering. But surely, I'm, Kent, I'm, if these people live in the area, in the same area that they're doing this to, they're doing it to themselves as well. And their families. And their they families. Are. They are. They are. And we've seen a lot of people line up, just line up in the droves. To get shit projected at the they, they all did that too. And then very sadly, we've got people lining up with their little kids in line for that. You're breaking What's up happening? a bit there, Ken. Yeah, but well, can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like, like what's going on that people are prepared to do these things? It's like Lance has said it's an IQ test before. The the fact is, um, we're lied to, we're manipulated, we're coerced. Um, there, are, there are many of us still, thankfully, who um, had not allowed ourselves to be coerced and we have been prepared to um, make that sacrifice and lose our full career. Um, I'm not one of those people. Luckily, I was retired before, and I chose to retire as this was happening. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be um, you know, there are those people who paid the full price with their career, and I'm sure they're, that their heart goes up to James for the emotional and mental trauma that's been forced on him, but that was also forced on them, yet in a different way. I'm with Lance, 100%. This has got to be something that we can unite people across Australia to look into for the benefit of the health of their children. I mean, um, I have seen what comes out of filters once regular council water has been filtered for um, even three months. And the dirty, black, slimy grunge and the putrid smell that comes out of those filters, you know that you don't want that stuff to be going through your um, your children's kidneys, through their liver, through their brain, through their heart muscles. You want your children to be protected and safe. Um, yeah, you're dropping out, Ken. We're, we're having difficulty hearing you. But look, um, okay, so we've had our fun with the politicians. We know they're a bunch of losers. We we need to turn this into positive action. That yeah. That's that's the real message. So what we need to do is we need that typical analysis that they sent you. We need to compare that to a detailed analysis from a NADA certified laboratory. and um, and And then we take it to the GGA. And we say, why, why are you guys letting this happen? Where's the oversight? We take it to the um, senators across Australia and we ask them why they're allowing the poisoning of um, the slave workforce. 
of uh, of this country. We, we've got to, we've got to put pressure on guys when we get the opportunity. They need to know that we know. They need to know we're working this stuff out. So let's do that. Um, how do we get behind you and help you, James? Well, I'm just prepared with my medical information alone to help you guys or help anyone that wants to. Um, yeah, look at getting some filtration on their homes. Do you know what I mean? I'm happy for anyone to use my medical information there. Uh, and I'm happy to be a voice to say I've been on filtered water for three months and my severe liver disease has gone. And the doctor's words were, it's a miracle. He was stunned. He was absolutely stunned in that appointment. I could tell. He was getting a little bit emotional like I was. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy. To, I'm happy to moving forward to show the evidence of them telling me not to drink the water you've got a medical condition my one of my last emails to urban utilities was you have told me not to drink the water should i tell all other australians with a medical condition not to drink the water do you know what i got back after that point no contact they stopped contacting me yeah, so look, when it comes to your billing, they just take a hard line. They're, they're pushing the commercial narrative, right? It doesn't mean that they've got a point in law. Um, they have a contract to supply a product. If that product doesn't meet the specification, mm -hmm. then they're in breach of contract. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they would have a contract to supply water that's um, suitable for uh, human consumption. Yours clearly isn't. Mm -hmm. um, it must it must be a hell of a contaminated pipe, mate, between uh, the, the uh, stop valve out the front in your house, I can tell you that much. But, but do bear in mind that um, some of these plastic pipes they use are pretty nasty. Uh, vinyl chloride is in the uh, PVC piping. Yeah. Vinyl chloride is a much... Mm, don't must may leak out of the the infrastructure that deliver vinyl chloride is very dangerous as well. I've looked into that. Yeah. So and that's the infrastructure, the PVC piping that our water comes through. James, would you be happy to share this information on some of the other um, independent podcasters and independent journalists we've got? Yeah, I'm happy to talk to anyone. Because I want to, I want to help people. I want to, I want to help try and help people that are sick, that are drinking this water, unknowing of the effects of these chemicals and metals in the water that it's having on their bodies. And I believe that we see, like when I was growing up, if you heard of somebody that had cancer, that was very, very, very unusual. But these days, everyone seems to have some sort of sickness, and people die very young these days of things. So I think the water may have a big part. A absolutely, mm -hmm. James. I gave a book recently to my father to read. It was called Killing Cancer, Not People. And one of the biggest things that he got out of reading that book, and he's he's an ex-pharmacist, so I thought he would enjoy that book, obviously, you know. <laughs> it's been hard to turn him around, but he was fascinated by that book, and I thought he would enjoy reading that. And he actually, uh, in reading that book, because I haven't had a chance to get all the way through it yet, it did talk a lot about using, like, proper water um, to actually heal the bodies of the cancer because, obviously, you've got to keep it more alkaline than acidic. Uh, and things like that. So uh, I'm not surprised to hear you say, you know, with the water and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. And listen, guys, I, I am a Christian. I, start, I picked up the Bible. I'm 56. I picked up the Bible when I was 48, and that gives me so much strength and wisdom now as well. And like I said before, there's there's lots of scriptures in the Bible that talk about living water. And for that doctor to watch a documentary the night I went in to get some tests done, he was telling me about living water and dead water. It's scientifically proven um, about living water. So, and the scriptures talk about living water, Jeremiah 17, 13, John 4, 10, John 4, 11, John 7, 38. Um, I could go on with more, but it all talks about living water. And that's what God created for us, I believe. So, um, you know, living water. So 
Yeah, Yvonne says James needs to hear Ian Clark's interview that we did and adding one teaspoon of sea salt to every litre of water. Uh, and it was a really good bar. I think it was the bar Bahaj salt that he was he was using rather than uh, things like Himalayan salt or than better than um, much better than table salt. But um, yeah, yeah, using that as well. But yeah, definitely. I, I think in the in the past you hear people where they have two plants and they have two say two jugs of water. And in one jug of water, they could talk really bad to the water and really abuse the water and then feed that to the plant. And in the other jug of water, they speak life into the water. They speak good things into the water and then they feed that to the plant. And the one that's had the water spoken to them and given the good energy goes on to live. And the one that actually puts all the bad energy into the water and feeds the plant, the plant ends up dying. So, um, again, not surprised to hear you say that. Yeah, water I, was to, I was talking to Brad Paxton at the weekend, I think, and he said, uh, he heard that, yeah, when you when you drink a glass of water, pure water, living water, hold it up in the air, and before you drink it, say honour and love. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really like talking to Brad, but he gets a little bit too technical for me. He's very <laughs> scientific, and, um, yeah, we had a few laughs, and, yeah, he's a good fella, eh? Yeah. All right, guys, yeah. we're nearly almost at time. Have you guys got any last questions that you'd like to ask James or James, any last comments that you'd like to share with our audience this evening? No, I'd just like to tell everyone, yeah, from my point of view, you know, a very short, in a few months, my whole body changed. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. So, so <laughs> I've had too many other things happen in my life to know that things don't happen by coincidences so i really believe that yeah looking to getting your water filtered guys um we all need to go to the councils to ask them as communities to remove fluoride from our water number one uh do it as communities gather in communities and go to the council in in large droves and ask for you know fluoride to re remove first and let's look at all the other ones as a group let's let's move forward together and let's start to get our water back to where, you know, it needs to be. Also, uh, Artie Karen, as uh, she tried to help me through the process as well, she's got concerns about the water. She uh, helped me write it. She come over the top of my emails to Urban Utilities and they didn't even respond to Karen either. So I think with the um, Indigenous people, we, I mean, it's their, you know, they're the tr traditional owners. They should have some say in this as well. I mean, they, these uh, corporations uh, operate on their land. They say it on on you know on their um, on their intros on their websites. You know, so I think if the indigenous people can really, if we can work together, you know, getting our water safe and drinkable again, and um, yeah, definitely eliminating all these chemicals and metals, I think we're going to be far better off. And it, you know, as we're adults, we're family members, we're dads, we're mums, do you know what I mean? And and all I want is for a better future for our children and our grandchildren to come. And that's what we should be striving for. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little example, I'm just one bloke, um, but I've had a remarkable change in my body. So I'm right behind. And if I can give you guys any help in the future, and I'm happy to be an example with my test results and with the um, information given by Urban Utilities to me to help you people and to help our fellow Australians move forward and, and live a healthier life. Because I believe that water is a very big part of our lives, of course, and we really need to approach this as a, as a group, as communities, and really putting some pressure on these government corporations to eliminate the dangers in these waters. Yeah. It's great. One of our... James great james that you took responsibility and now that you, now you are proof that our water has been poisoned so very well done to you for everything that you've done in that regard i'm here, I'm here to help everyone it's not just about me you know i just want to help all the decent australians out there to lead a better life you know so yeah cool Cool. All right, guys. No more last comments. Time to wrap it up for the week. It's been great having you here, James, and um, well done on turning your health around. We're so glad to hear that you've uh, back to good health as far as your liver's concerned. And, you know, you've, you've got now a good filtration system on your house, drinking good water. Um, yeah, let, let's um, keep moving forward, guys. Um, hold your politicians accountable. Find out 
what the quality of the water is like in your local councils. Water is life, guys. Water is living. So know what's in your water because not all water is the same. We want to thank you for joining us on Triple Tap. Thank you, Kent. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, James. Honour to have you on the show tonight. And thank you to everybody. We'll see you next time on Triple Tap. Bye for now. See you guys.